So today at the Vintage Radio and Communications Museum, the TV restoration team is beginning our work and evaluation of a RCA CT100 that was donated to the museum by a longtime RCA engineer that had this set squirreled away in his bedroom. This one has a good CRT. We tested it and we're going to remove it today and put the controversial vacuum seal on it to try and ensure that it does not go to air. At this time, we will also catalog the parts that are, are or are not with it. This chassis is pretty rough. It's missing all the tubes. Most of the shields are here. And this is serial number. I can get it in focus there. 636. So all these started with B8000 and 636. So this is the 636th chassis that came off the line. And we have cabinet number five. Now the cabinet numbers aren't that significant because they came from a different shop. And the idea of the cabinet number was to make sure that the cabinet and the lid stayed together during production. We'll have much more on this set later, more on. Stay tuned. Here we have the 15GP22 being readied for back seal. This is a nice tube. Take a look at the getters. Look nice and healthy. And what we have to do here, and this is controversial because some say it works and some say it doesn't, is to seal the frit here where the glass and the metal are joined together. This is quite an honor to have this up on the RCA altar. Stay tuned. So here's the finished product where the uh, altar has been sealed to the flange or bell with this product called Vac Seal. And again, there is controversy whether this is effective or not, but again, it doesn't hurt. Stay tuned. So here we have a 1954 RCA CT100 chassis. This came from the collection of David Niergaard, who uh, worked for RCA back in the 1960s, and his dad worked there from 1936 up until the 1960s. This is serial number 636. When we received the set, it had uh, no tubes, no vacuum tubes in it at all. Uh, except for one, the 6AL5 right here. Now that 6AL5 had a date code on it of the 13th week of 1954, which is very early. Uh, so what we did was we cleaned this up really good, and it did clean up good. And it looks like it doesn't have a whole lot of hours on it. It has jacks on it here, and then there was one in the back. It looks like they removed it. And it would appear that this set was used up at Princeton for uh, experimentation and training and things like that. That's what we think. It became available to the um, at the RCA surplus store in the early 60s, and David bought it. So I went through this and replaced the electrolytics in the power supply. I brought it up on a Variac, and it did not perform well trying to reform them, so I replaced them. Uh, the next thing here is we built a better ballast. I, I always do this on these. Um, the ballast is that they put on here is that plug-in metal one. It has two resistance wires in it. It's for, for the um, complexity of the set, it's a very cheap way to construct a voltage divider. So this is a lot better. It'll dissipate the heat better, and the less the, the less these heat up, the less their resistance will change. So we did that. Um, and also, 
and we resealed the CRT. Not not resealed. I'm sorry, that's the wrong thing to say. We sealed it with vac seal, um, just as a precaution. I've done seven of these, and every one of them that that I expect to to work and last, I did it. There's some controversy about whether the vac seal works or not, but I do it anyway. As people know, the CRT on these are metal and glass. They're frit together in two places, and um, they have a tendency to leak. So John Bayuzic at the museum helped me pull all the tubes. We put as many RCA tubes in here as we can find. They're all new old stock. Filters are Sprague. Um, I'll talk about the rest of the components when I flip this over. But um, I like to use the SAMs and the, the uh, RCA service data. I like to lay out the SAMs better. I, I just I just do, and everybody has their preference on this. And uh, in some situations, I like to use the service data, especially to set it up when we do setups on them. The service data is way better. Okay, the next thing was to connect it to the uh, test jig here. And I used my adapters, my uh, CT100 adapters that were homemade. I haven't used them since 2003 to dig them out. That's the last time I did one of these sets. Um, they work good, though. And went through it. I did like a, a Shango-type resurrection. Um, almost every one of the peaking coils, these are DC feeders and peaking coils. There's a lot of them. There's about 10 of them in here. Um, they're almost always open. Um, I just jump them out to start with just to, uh, see if the set is going to work okay or not. If the high voltage deflection components are okay, because if they're not, then we're kind of dead in the water here. Um, I brought it slow, up slow on the Variac. I did get high voltage and it ran pretty good. We'll talk about that in a second. But I found, just like on almost every one of these, the vertical oscillator transformer was open. So I replaced that. Just jump one in there. I have a, a, a stand core replacement for now. I clipped out the other one. Um, I had an open cap in the screen grid circuit of the horizontal output tube. And lo and behold, I was able to get high voltage on it. And I was also able to get vertical deflection. However, the focus pot started burning. Um, that could be just routine or it could be bad because that's connected to the vertical uh, convergence transformer. And if that transformer has a short in it, which is right here, uh, that really sucks because that's a very hard part to get. John Folsom had some made back in 2001, 2002, and we did use one of them and it worked okay. So I saw some other people talking about it on Video Karma, and they said they can't get them anymore, and they can't get a hold of Folsom. So hopefully that's not a problem. What I do is I pull the focus rectifier out, which is the power supply for that pot right here. I pulled it out. So after that, we can see it run. It doesn't run so good, but it runs. All right, so there she blows. Um, not perfect for sure, but good enough to see that the chassis is is capable of producing deflection, producing vertical and horizontal scan and high voltage, and that's a good thing. So the next thing that we want to do with this, before I go any further with it, because everything is sort of tagged in on the bottom here just to get it running like a shingle resurrection, we want to slide the CRT back into the cabinet and slide this chassis in here and make sure that it can power up the CRT and that the CRT is actually good. And from here, once we know that, we'll get into this thing and we'll get it go, get it uh, lined up and recapped correctly. Uh, it should work really good. It looks very promising. And the museum will have a working CT100 to show our guests that come in. Stay tuned.